Hi, in this movie, we are going to discuss about the fundamental concept of cloud computing. Following will be the agenda for this presentation. The very first thing we are going to look at is the definition of the cloud computing. Then we will be looking at essential characteristics. Along with that, we'll discuss about the service model as well as the deployment models of the cloud computing. Then we'll look at the basics of virtualization, which is actually a building block of uh, the cloud computing concept. At last, we are going to look at that what are the cloud researchers need and how CloudSim bridges the gap. So let's start with what is cloud computing. As per the special publication of NIST document number 800-145, they quote, Cloud computing is a model for enabling ubiquitous convenient on-demand network access to shared pool of configurable computing resources. For example, network, server, storage, application, and services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management efforts or without any service providers interaction. On the similar note, NIST also defined the five essential characteristics that any platform should hold to become a cloud computing platform. So the very first one is the on-demand self-service, which means resources can be provisioned without any intervention of the cloud service provider. Second, broad network access. This is one of the most important characteristics, which says that access to the cloud resources is available all over the network using standard methods, just like by using TCP IP, UDP IP, or any, any sort of other protocols which are already available. And as we know, most of the cloud service providers are providing their services through internet itself. Now, the third important thing that is the resource pooling, which means cloud service provider create resources that are pooled together in a system that supports the multi-tenant users so that one particular platform can be used by multiple people or users. Fourth, rapid elasticity, which is another very, very important characteristic, which states that resources can be provisioned or deprovisioned as per the user load whenever it is required. Last and the most important, that is measured services, which means use of cloud system resources is measured, audited and built to the customer as per their usage, because we know cloud service providers are providing their services as a utility. So it's very important to you know, raise the invoices for their customers. NIST has defined the three basic service delivery models. For this, there are two different stakeholders. One is the cloud service provider, which is also known as vendor, or, and another one is the client or the consumer who is consuming the cloud services. And each service model defines their responsibility area for each stakeholder. So let's start with the very first one, that is software as a service. It is a complete operating environment with application management and the user interface. Like we use Gmail, we use Salesforce, we use Facebook, etc. And here, everything from application downtime to the infrastructure is the responsibility of the cloud service provider or vendor. Second, platform as a service. It provides virtual machine, operating system, application services, development framework, transactions and control structures. Now here, the service provider manages the infrastructure, manages the operating system and the software frameworks which are required for the development of the application. Whereas the client is responsible for installing and managing the application as well as its deployment if it is required. So the best examples what we have in the market are Google App Engine, Microsoft Azure and so on. Last one is the infrastructure as a service. This provides uh, virtual machines, virtual storage, virtual infrastructure and other hardware assets as resources that client can provision, right? So it's more, more like you go and buy the hardware and you know you use it for various uh, purposes. This is the similar one, but it's in a virtual manner and has been delivered over the network. It's just like renting the hardware, right? So here only the infrastructure is managed by the vendor and all other aspects like application development and its deployment related activities are managed by the client. Best example in the industry is Amazon EC2, which is also known as Elastic Cloud Compute, Google Cloud, GoGrid, and there are many more. NIST has also defined four deployment models, and these are categorized on the basis of their location of the deployment. These are four, public, private, hybrid, or community. When you talk about public cloud, it is available for everyone. Uh, anyone can go and opt for the cloud service uh, from any of the organization which are selling uh, these services over the internet and they will be billed as per whatever their usage has been done. Second is private cloud. It is operated exclusively for an organization. 
and it is implemented mostly in private premises of the organization and only accessible to the members of the organization so it's it's the limited group which they work on then comes the hybrid cloud it is a combination of private and public cloud the deployment of hybrid cloud could be due to number of reason one could be the cost one could be the untrusted workloads or storage of sensitive data so you choose which thing is to be put on the private cloud and which is to be sent to the public cloud for the further processing next comes is a community cloud it is one where the cloud has been organized to serve a common function or purpose for multiple organizations this is a variation of private cloud where the persons from constituent organizations have access to the community cloud opting for community cloud could be due to various reasons might be a certain set of organization work in the same area but they do they do not have the cost to be the infrastructure then they come together and constitute a community cloud and people from those organization only can access that particular infrastructure and so on this could be one set of scenario there could be another scenario where uh, let's say uh, there there is one central entity and which which have certain subsidiaries and they wanted only thus those subsidiaries to access that particular cloud so th there could be different kind of scenarios for this now as we have talked about the service models as well as the deployment models but but we also need to talk about the technology which actually enabled all these things and that is the virtualization so when you talk about the virtualization it is it is the fundamental component of the cloud computing and, and that enabled the infrastructure to be efficiently delivered as a service to the consumers it allows the creation of secure customizable and isolated execution environment for running applications and the virtualization is a very broad technology and can provide virtual environment at the operating system level at the programming level at the application level and there are so many different uh, uh, scenarios we have for the virtualization but for our course the scope of the virtualization we are going to discuss about is the hardware virtualization where the abstract layer of virtualization provide virtual machine virtual storage virtual memory as well as the network uh, to the subscribing users and this hardware virtualization is enabled by using some special uh, system software right which is named as the hypervisor they are sometimes also named as the virtual machine managers virtual machine monitor monitors there are so so many other uh, names they are being uh, called by but the exact name what we are going to use throughout is the hypervisor so let's understand the basic setup of uh, of the non virtualized and the virtualized host so when you when you talk about the traditional host what we have at the bottom is the hardware over the above it's a operating system which is installed on that on that particular hardware so this kind of system is a tightly coupled system and uh, the operating system uh, uh, communicates with the hardware by using isa that is instruction set architecture now over the above operating system we install certain kind of libraries which which support certain kind of deployment environment and over the above we we install the applications now libraries communicate with the operating system by using abi which is stands for arbitrary binary interfaces whereas application communicates with the library by using APIs, which is application programming interface. So the complete system is a tightly coupled system, and in case some kind of modification is required, some kind of utilize utilization uh, measures are need to be uh, achieved. Then in that case, this is quite a difficult environment to do all all such things. So what people have thought about uh, is that why not we add on an extra abstraction layer between the hardware and the operating system, so that one single hardware can be shared across uh, different users whenever it is required or can be fine tuned in per, in terms of utilization of the hardware resources so if you look at the right hand side diagram what we have at the bottom is the hardware and over the above what we have is the abstraction layer which is basically nothing but we have installed a hypervisor so hypervisor is a minimalistic operating system which is basically a kernel of linux if if i take an example uh there is one uh, specific software from vmware which is esxi which has a minimalistic kernel of suse linux so we we install that uh, hypervisor on the hardware and over the above what that minimalistic kernel allows us to do is to create virtual machines on so this might be a new word for you virtual machine so what this virtual machine allows us to do is this allows us to create a wrapper 
uh, environment for the operating system installation so if you see carefully what we have in the traditional system from operating system to the application part we also have in our virtual machine one and virtual machine two so what happens here is that in between uh, the virtual machines and the hardware there are two ISs that is instruction set architectures so virtual machines are, con are c sending the ISA instructions to the hypervisor and hypervisor is further con uh, communicating it to the hardware so hypervisor becomes as an intermediate in between so this is how the complete independence from that tightly coupled system is there so we call these systems as loosely coupled because this allows a lot of flexibility we can consolidate our virtual machines. We can make them uh, uh, move around on, on the network to different hosts whenever it is required. So we say consolidation, we say aggregation. These are the two terms which are being used. So when you compare all both these uh, things, so traditional host environment, the virtual environment can share the physical resources to multiple users by means of virtual machine, which are emulating the host execution environment. And this is the basic fundamental delivery as a infrastructure that every cloud service provider is offering to their customers instead of offering the actual host so i hope it made some clarity now why we have talked about all this in detail because this is where the cost is involved I mean, this virtual infrastructure of cloud once rented will cost to renting individual or the organization with the least privileges to change the underlying resources or task scheduling environments so as most of the researchers are working with the limited research funding, it is not always feasible for them to rent the needed infrastructure to run their repetitive test. And flexibility of changing the core execution environment is also limited in real time cloud service uh, environments. So, apart from that, the changing real time load of the cloud service provider will affect the quality of their test results. So therefore, it arises the need of simulating environment where with minimal cost, the valid repetitive results can be produced and cloud sim is one of the tool which can fulfill these needs to some extent. So if I talk about cloud sim, it is a simulation framework, which is comprising of set of uh, class libraries written in Java that supports both modeling and simulation of cloud computing based system and application provisioning environment. And if, if I talk about its features, so it has following features, the modeling and simulation of large scale computing environment on a single commodity machine. This might be a laptop, this might be a, some small server, or maybe some kind of desktop machine, any any commodity machine which you which you talk about, right? The only thing you require is a Java environment in that and some kind of ID which supports Java. Second is the self-contained platform for modeling cloud service brokers, provisionings and allocation policies that can also be done which is a hardcore component of uh, any operating environment then support simulation of network connection among the simulated system components then it also supports the simulation of uh, federated cloud and support for the virtualization engine where you can design as many as uh, virtual machine with different kind of configuration if you want it can be homogeneous it can be heterogeneous so, right so there are there, there are so many settings in that it also supports for the energy efficient policy implementation with support for aggregation and isolation of the virtual machine which is again a very important thing when when a cloud researcher is working on power efficient algorithms or power efficient task schedulings or resource schedulings and so on or maybe they are working on some sla uh, based algorithms and there are various scenarios in which researchers do the hypothesis and all so therefore uh, i believe the cloud sim can be a one-stop solution for the researchers if extended strategically and properly and uh, this is what our course is all about so i will be discussing about the basic components basic entities uh, the uh, basic engine how this simulation work and how you can start working with the basic uh, set of scenarios to some advanced set of scenarios so with that uh, i close this particular session and in next video we are going to set up the cloud sim uh, and the version which we are going to use is 3.0.3